All right, guys. So we're talking about navigating pet food labels today. And that is such an important topic and something that I think most people have literally no idea about. And um, Pam was just saying right before we started recording that we're probably going to have to turn this into multiple podcast episodes just because there is so much to talk about and there are so many tangents that we can go down. Um, so I think First of all, you're definitely going to, going to want to stick around for the entire episode because it's going to be chocked full of information. Uh, but make sure you're also following the podcast because then you can get notified on your podcast app when we publish new episodes so you can continue listening to the conversation because there is just so much, so mm -hmm. much to pack into this one topic about pet food labels. As a pet parent, you face more challenges with your dogs and cats today than ever before in history. What's the best food to feed? How do I prevent illness and help them live longer? Maybe you currently have a pet living with disease or behavioral issues and you need a different approach for success. Welcome to the Pet Health Junkies podcast. We're so happy you're here. Pam Roussel is a holistic health practitioner specializing in holistic health for animals. Janet Cesarini is a healthy pet store owner and advocate for health through nutrition. Jessica Fisher is a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Join us as we share our stories, experiences, and all that we've learned to change the way we think about raising our pets. We're breaking it all down and making it simple by sharing how we help pet parents just like you every day, because when we know better, we can do better. I raided the store before I left to come join the podcast. I thought it would be nice from, you know, my perspective, having the, the retail store to show some labels. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I mean, just, just if we start at like what the label, what a pet food package looks like. I know Susan Thixton at Truth About Pet Food has an incredibly detailed blog post about um, just the exterior label of a pet food package and like what part of that packaging is actually regulated by the FDA. And it is minimal, like yeah. super, super yeah. minimal. The bulk right. of packaging of pet foods is all marketing to you, the consumer, not to yeah. <laughs> our pets. So um, we can certainly talk about that some more, but who who wants to start? Let's start with Janet's labels. With yeah. Me. Well, first, I know we a big part of our podcast is to share our experiences. And so the one that always pops into my mind with regard to, you know, our five dogs is we used to shop um, years ago. Um, at big box stores. And we, that's where we got our advice before mm -hmm. I knew about now being a pet store owner um, before I knew kind of behind the scenes. And so, you know, one thing we don't do in our store is we never have our brands that come to us and say, Hey, um, this is about to expire or, Hey, we're changing a formulation. Um, we made too much. We want to push this product. So we're going to incentivize you to sell it. We never, ever, ever do that. And I, I can't speak for a hundred percent of independent pet stores, but I'm pretty darn sure that, you know, an truly independently owned pet store, um, does not operate that way. So back to, you know, I'm, I'm standing in the aisle and two, two things. One, a particular brand rep, and this was new to me, was walking down the aisle and offering me a coupon. And of course, I asked about that and asked about the food. And, you know, across the front was all natural. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I bought it hook, line and sinker. I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have done it as well. Um, all natural. We see it in human food, you know, in the human food world as well. But and yep. we see it all over pet foods. And I think, you know, that one right there is a, a hot topic because mm -hmm. we have natural flavors. Yep. Or we have natural chicken flavor. 
And I think, you know, in, when we spoke with Dr. Uh, Yamka, he was talking about flavors and he said that if it truly is um, legit, it should be, have the protein called out and name it specifically. Do you all remember that? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. natural flavors was one, but then just the name of the other um, scenario that came to mind was a treat. And the name of the treat in the name of the treat was the word fruit. <laughs> I, I really, really a hundred percent believe that I was buying something healthy for the dogs because it had the name fruit. And you know what was on the, the label? Beautiful picture of fruit. Yeah. Colorful, bright. And I thought, okay, this is awesome. It's a great price point. We can give our dogs a healthy fruit treat. Now I know, you know, give my dog an apple without pill, you know, without the peeling because of lectins. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but give them banana, give them fresh green beans, give them something like that. Um, but back to the labels, I just finally, you know, fast forward several years and we've shared our origin stories. I now am an avid label reader um, for my own pets, yeah. for every customer every friend, family member that we come into contact with, we're always saying, you know, read the label. You don't look at the front of the bag. You've got to study the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. You know, put the bag's facing backward on the shelves because that's the more important thing yes. to look at than the front. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. If you're ever in Georgetown, Texas, and you're shopping down a pet aisle and you see a bag that's turned around backwards, chances are I was there. <laughs> uh, if, if I'm in a if I'm in a store, it's not very often that I'm in a store other than my own or um, but just because of the time commitment. Yeah. Thank you, Mitzi. <laughs> so the tree guys. So anyhow. I, yeah, I will turn around the, the bag, hoping that subliminally people will realize that we need to read the ingredient label. Yeah. So I did um, bring some treats. Ooh, sweet. From my store. Yeah. Thank you, Mitzi. <laughs> I, so what I, can I go ahead and talk about this just a quick minute? Sure. Yeah. You're good. So what I like about the front, because I, so I'm covering the brand, but it's minimal. I mean, it is cute and it's colorful. I mean, you've got to have branding and this is fitting with this brand. This is their actual, the cartoon version of their personal little dog, Abby. Um, but they call out that it's wheat free, which is a, a good thing. But then the question comes to mind, okay, but what's, What's in it that's like holding it together is what I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look at the ingredient panel. It calls out that it has apple, cinnamon, coconut. And this particular brand is known for putting coconut and chia seed in their cookies, in their biscuits. Um, and then it is oven baked. I'm sorry about the guy, the, the dogs. <laughs> Kim will be guys, doing it okay. too, I Thank promise. People. There she goes. So what? Kim will be doing it too here in a minute. The house across the street from us is, they're trying to close. So they're like constantly people there. <laughs> Charlie, no. It's okay, guys. They've been here all day. It's the same people. Thank you for protecting mommy. So on the back, um, we have, you know, all the selling points, the unique selling points, the features that are called out with the cute little stars. And so it's made in small batches. Um, this is a handmade product. It is. It says it's heart healthy. And we know that that's the case because it has the omegas three, six and nine from the chia seed. Um, it has natural dietary fiber and um, that's gonna be your chia seed as well. Oat flour is what is the binder. No oat hulls, but oat flour, 100% um, all natural. There's that. Yeah. So that makes me want to go down to the ingredients. And I'm going to stop and read the ingredients. It's oat flour, coconut, apples, honey, carrots, 
chia seed, coconut oil, cinnamon, and vanilla. That's it. So you and I, we literally could eat these. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And calories. There's nine calories per treat. Um, which if you have a little dog is significant, any, any dog. And one, one of the um, articles I was just reading actually, um, this morning was talking about, I think it was by Dr. Marty and he was talking about just, you know, remembering to consider that any treat that's added to your dog's daily intake. And I try not to treat every day, but I do, I do treat probably at least three days a week. And so I have to take that into consideration. And we're always telling our customers that in the store to take into consideration that, you know, if you give them three treats, that's 27 calories. And for a dog like my Mitzi, who's 12 pounds and eats around 250 calories a day, yeah. you know, that's 10% mm -hmm. roughly. So got to, got to take that into consideration. Yeah. Definitely have to adjust in the, in the bowl for those. Otherwise you get a really obese dog. Yes. Dogs. Yeah. Cats. And, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to just talk really quickly about, you know, as you were going over the label, everything that you talked about before you got to the ingredient list, none of that is regulated by the FDA. Nope. So the only thing that you spoke about that's actually regulated is the ingredient list. And mm -hmm. the calories per mm -hmm. per cookie. Right. Yeah. So yeah, the guaranteed literally analysis. everything else that made you grab that bag is mm -hmm. not regulated. So I mean, I'm not saying that that's a bad treat by any means, yeah. but just so people understand everything that is making you grab that bag, mm -hmm. there's no regulation to that whatsoever. They can say whatever mm -hmm. they want. <laughs> yeah. And they can use pictures you know, of whatever they want. And I'm... I'm glad you called that out. You're absolutely right. And, you know, we don't carry a lot of biscuit treats in my store. We carry a lot of single source protein, a lot of freeze dried protein, a lot of freeze dried organs like liver, lung and heart. Um, and so this is one of the few biscuits I carry because it has a limited ingredient panel. And, um, you know, the calories could be a little bit lower, but this also is a big enough treat that can be broken in half. But I like the ingredient panel, despite everything else being marketing. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 And, but it is just so important for a consumer to understand that everything yes. that is drawing your eye to that bag, all of the buzzwords on the front of a package. And I'm kind of going back to Susan Thixton's article that I mentioned earlier on the front of a package. The only thing required is the brand name. And for food, it has to list that, you know, is it for adult? Is it for puppy? Is it all life stages? If it is complete nutrition and then what it is. So like if it's beef or if it's a, a chicken meal or chicken dinner or, you know, those, those words that we can talk about later. <laughs> and then like how much is actually contained in the packaging. And that's really all that's required on the front Everything else on the front of that package, if it's a picture of a cut of steak or a picture of some beautiful ripe fruit, um, whatever it may be, if it says, you know, all natural, no wheat, no, you know, grain free, whatever else it says is all, it may be true, but it's all marketing and not at all regulated. Yep. So it goes back to yep. make sure we read the label mm -hmm. on anything. Yeah. So let's, do you want to touch on um, organic? I love this one. <laughs> yeah. And so the, um, anybody can put the little green sticker or white sticker that says organic um, mm -hmm. on any package of anything. It's kind of like um, the whole grass fed, you know, terminology. So I've got to cover up my brands <laughs> right there is yeah. USDA. None uh -huh. of these brands have paid me or, or asked me or they have no idea they're even in here. I just went through my store and picked out some things, 
But um, I wanted to show this one because of the USDA organic um, symbol. It has to say USDA organic for it to um, truly be an organic product. Yeah, and that's a if, whole if thing guys wanna... for a brand to get USDA organic um, seal. Like it's a whole thing that, that a company has to go through to get that. So that's important that you brought that up because if they don't go through that process or they can't go through that process, they don't qualify, whatever it may be, they, they don't have the money to go through the process, whatever it is, they're not going to be able to, to say that it's USDA certified organic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and this, there, go ahead. No, go ahead. Which no, question? I was say, and the, it, it doesn't mean that every single ingredient in that product has to be organic either. No. Isn't there like a percentage of the product that has to meet those requirements? And I don't remember what that What's number that? I'm not I'm not familiar with um, what that percentage is. Hmm. I can only like speak for this right now. In this case, um, I have coconut oil and the only ingredient in this is coconut. That's a single ingredient is the organic coconut oil. Right. And, you know, talking about labels. It also says on there that it's unprocessed um, and that's important with coconut oil. You want it to be either cold pressed or unprocessed. I mean, there's so many things like you were saying when we started, Jessica, there's so many things that we could go off into tangents and it would be really interesting to, to have our listeners write in, you know, having specific questions about certain product categories like kibble or raw food or treats and, or even, you know, certain, you know, I don't know if we want to get into brands, but just questions to let us know because it gets very confusing and maybe we can drop yeah. some resources yeah. like down in the comments for them. So it looks like products labeled organic or 100, even 100% 100 organic must contain at least 95% organically produced ingredients, excluding water and salt. Okay, cool. 95%. So that's the... 95%. Yeah. Excluding water and salt. <laughs> There's no salt in the two products I showed. <laughs> I brought another one. Okay. Flea and Tick. Oh, you, can any, any guesses? Like I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, we're going to go on a tangent. <laughs> Flea tick, heartworm, and raw food. Those are the things now. But any guesses on what the ingredients are? This is a natural flea and tick because we only carry that in our store. No harm, no foul. Well, it's got to be essential drops. oils. Yeah. I would think so. Yes. And some kind of carrier. A carrier oil? The carrier oil is almond oil. Okay. And the only other two ingredients are cedar wood and peppermint oil. Mm -hmm. As we know, those are deterrents for flying insects. So yes. that means even mosquitoes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I just to kind of speak on the brand, I personally don't have a problem speaking on brands. Um, that's just me. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not I'm not paid one way or the other. I, I'm not I have zero intention of ever. Um, you know, having a brand deal, like I will have on my website affiliate links, but only to companies and brand, you know, brands and products that I use and love and trust, um, not because they're asking me to or paying me to. So I personally don't have a problem. And I find that, and, and the reason that I bring that up and I say that is because I find that most of the comments and questions that I get, people are very specific about Different. this is what I use and this is what I want to know about because they can't generalize. So they're like, tell me exactly this about what is in front of me. And once they learn that, then then maybe they can take that information and kind of generalize it to to other products. Um, but yeah, I understand about and because I was I, I was telling Pam before we started my mom texted me this morning about a, um, a food and she was like, tell me what you think about this food. So I was going to talk about it today, which we'll get to in just a little bit. So make sure you pay attention and, and keep, keep listening. Um, so I was going to do that with you guys and, and have you, you 
weigh in on what I told my mom. <laughs> but um, do you have, I, I was going to, before we move to the back of the label, do you have anything you want to add, Pam? No, I just, I just think it's important to remind people, like you said, the marketing on the front of the later label with the beautiful pictures and all the nice words that draw you in are strictly there for marketing purposes. They really don't mean anything. You've got to, no. you got to turn the bag around. Yeah. And no. really marketing is a double-edged sword, right? Because companies that are doing it right yeah. and they are using buzzwords on their packaging that are completely true, of course we want to see that, right? We want to see them um, championing single single um, ingredients and, and um, you know, that, that we can processed. trust their sourcing, that they're transparent. Like, we want to see all of that when it's true, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, um, mm -hmm. but that's why it's, it, that's why we have to continue to educate people on what to look for. Um, on packaging and you know when you find a company that you do trust I would support them oh my goodness because mm -hmm. they need especially these small companies they need they need our support to mm -hmm. keep a foothold in the market and mm -hmm. um, keep doing what they're doing so personally I'm going back to Susan Thixton's article and I just went to the back I, I mean, I've read this article many times in preparation for other um, videos that I've done, but it's like every time I read it, I, I retain new information and I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> um, so when she gets to the back of the, the packaging, the again, the only thing that the FDA requires is um, or that is regulated is the brand of the company. Again, if it's for adult um, kitten, puppy, all life stages, whatever, to show that it is or is not complete, you know, nutrition, because that's another thing people really want to look for. Is it now in the United States, we have APCO, which is not necessarily the greatest standard in the world, but it's what we have. And we at least want to see in a, in a balanced diet that it meets or exceeds um, APCO minimums, right? Um, to be To be a balanced diet, to know that this is something we can feed our pets long term and they're not going to quote unquote suffer <laughs> from not having a balanced diet at least and then they're going to regulate that guaranteed analysis and ingredient label feeding guidelines um, and then you have to have of course your upc or barcode and then just the company information um, so again very very minimal on on the back of the packaging and even um, one of the things that I was I was going to talk about here in a couple of minutes when we get to this company that my mom asked me about the guaranteed analysis is not a nutritional analysis um, and most people have, don't even know what the guaranteed analysis means so they wouldn't even know that a nutritional analysis is something different um, do either of you want to speak on that a little bit on nutritional analysis or the guaranteed analysis and the differences. Well, the guaranteed well, why not? The protein and the fats and if it's processed, maybe like ash, if it has ash on there or omega three content. Sometimes they'll list some some vitamins or some minerals or whatever. But there, I have oh, a feeling yeah. that not all of those are required. There's probably only a, a minimal of those that are required on a package. And if yeah. you want to add to that, they're welcome to do so. And one thing that is not listed that we want listed. Yes. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. <laughs> Carbohydrates. Yeah. Yes. Because if pet parents understood how much how many carbohydrates were in their pet's food, they would probably freak out and not want to buy it. If they were mm -hmm. smart, you know, had the nutritional, um, I'd listened to a few podcasts about pet nutrition. <laughs> they would be going, no, thank you. We're not buying that food, especially for that would be a good package. That would be a good resource. So this one is crude protein is 34%. 
The crude fat is 36%. People are usually freak out about those numbers, but we're talking about a, you know, a freeze dried protein. It's yeah, not I was processed. Thinking, as, as you were saying that, I'm like, those are pretty high. What are you, what are you reading? <laughs> those are pretty high. <laughs> pretty decent. Yeah. Free, freeze dried, you know, meat, organ, bone, some produce, um, fiber, 8% and moisture is 3%. Um, so who wants to do the math and calculate the carbohydrates? I would need to get a calculator. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. 34, 36. 34 <laughs> is the protein. 36 is the fat. 8% is fiber and 3% is moisture. Okay. Remind me, I'm having a brain cramp. We don't, I don't think you add, you don't, you don't subtract the fiber. I don't think so. I think it's it's the, the um, fat, protein, the protein fat, and fat, protein, the fat, the moisture, and, and ash, 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 which they didn't list ash. So they don't I'm usually. It's not going to be any because probably because it's, it's not a processed, not a processed food. So let me read the ingredients. So if There's we don't minimal, if we don't add any ash. Yeah, if we don't add any ash, that's 22% left over. Yeah? Is that what you're getting? Minus. Hold on a second. So it was. So the way you do this, guys, is you take 100, because that's 100% of the product, and you subtract the protein, which was 36. Is that right? 34. So 30, 34. 34. Then you subtract the fat, class. which was 36. 36. You subtract the moisture, which was 3. 3. 3. Oh, it was three. I thought it was eight. Okay. My bad. Um, eight was the fiber. <laughs> That's right. And there's no ash to subtract. So that, hold on. I'm just having trouble. 34 minus 36 minus three. It leaves you 27% carbohydrate. Mm hmm. But that's a dog food, right? So that's appropriate for a dog. Because they are omnivores, and they and it's good vegetables and food. and yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We have to also understand that carbohydrate, natural carbohydrates, do come from fruit, fruits and vegetables. So right. it's that's um, what I was saying. Yeah, it doesn't break it down between complex carbs, which are your starches, versus your plants. You know, your fruits and vegetables. It's a totally different, totally different mm -hmm. animal. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty good, to, especially I mean, the, especially if you rehydrate it. Yes, yes. I missed that. What? What? Especially if you rehydrate it. I said it's pretty good, especially if you rehydrate yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah. this is seventy eight percent beef, organ, and bone, and twenty two percent produce and supplements. Um, and you know the produce is carrot, squash, kale, apples, broccoli, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seed, blueberries, cranberries, parsley, um, and then it has your apple cider vinegar, rosemary, um, quinoa, coconut, alfalfa. Your mixed tocopherols, which your vitamin E, and then um, the name I can never say, the clay. A montmorillonite. <laughs> Not can not learn that. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's a great well, food. The source of minerals, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Which so, I take humic mineral. And I think that's a it's a good time to say since you just read that ingredient label. In case someone out there doesn't know, because it's all it's always a possibility, the ingredient label has to be listed in order of the highest weight content first and then decrease from there. And that weight content is prior to cooking, or in this case, yes. I, I would say prior to This is freeze dried. dried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so beef heart, beef liver, ground beef bones are the first three ingredients. Yeah, and so- And then the pro produce. That's what you're gonna get the, the most mass from in the foods. And then that kind of, to me, leads into a trick that a lot of pet food companies do with ingredient splitting. And I can talk about that, but do you, either of you want to talk about it? No, go ahead. 
Okay. Right. <laughs> so uh, pet food companies, especially the ones that produce kibble, and just to be clear, because a lot of people have asked me, what do you mean when you say kibble? I'm uh, When I say kibble, I mean a high heat process extruded product. Those yeah, are dry my food. qualification. Yeah, dry food. So high heat process and extruded. Um, dry food, yes. So most of many of these companies, they do not, they want, they know psychologically that as consumers, we want to see some animal protein as the first ingredient. Um, we have been trained in the past probably 20 years or so. It kind of came up and was like, oh, oh, yeah, I do want to see animal protein as the first ingredient. Um, mm -hmm. So pet food companies have gotten wise to this, and they will do what is called what's called ingredient splitting. So uh, I've, I see it a lot with, like, peas. Um, yes. Oh, it drives me crazy. Yes. Peas, pea protein, pea yes. fiber. So they will it's break pea, up pea, pea. peas, corn, hey, lots of filler foods. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They will break it up. And listed as they'll have peas listed, they'll have pea protein listed, pea whey yeah. protein. I mean, they, they will they turn peas into so many different things that when you break them up and say these are different ingredients, the weight of those products, when you separate them, decreases enough to where they don't have to be listed higher in the ingredient panel. So in kind of in a nutshell, that's what ingredient splitting is. <laughs> and um, that is to me, just so incredibly deceptive. Um, and it's it really is just a psychological trick that they're using on pet parents and, and consumers so that we see animal protein at the top of that ingredient list and don't think to look any further. <laughs> and you see it in commercials too, for people who still watch regular TV um, and don't recorded or you know, watch streaming and you catch all the oh my gosh just pet parents are so heavily marketed to for a flea and tick yeah for prescriptions like apoquel and for pet food mm -hmm. and they talk about they'll even list them out on the screen you know it's chicken is the first ingredient um that's great but you know they don't talk about the the rest of the ingredients being a lot of the fillers like you've alluded to and I want to add on to what you guys have said. And when you're reading a dry food label, you know, you've turned the bag over, you're looking at the ingredients and it says, you know, chicken. And it may say, hopefully it'll go into like chicken liver, chicken heart, you know, and, and that's more in your. You're such an idealist, Janet. <laughs> I know. You know, I, I said that at dinner, that that's one of my three adjectives to describe myself, and it causes me so much heartache. But in a dry food, that's very hard to find. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just be honest. And do I sell dry food in my store? Yes, I do. Um, it's uh, it's necessary. We've got to meet people where their budgets are and where, where their lifestyles are. Um, and our goal is to just try to... Um, improve the nutrition in the bowl, even 25%. So, you know, we've heard Dr. Becker and we've heard Rodney talk about how if we can add um, fresh, minimally processed, you know, meats and whole foods to the, to the dog's meals, that we can improve longevity. Um, and, and I just read a statistic um, Saturday in the store about carbohydrates and it's a little bit of a tangent but just bear with me and it was talking about um lowering the carb load can actually add two and a half years of lifespan it's been shown and so i was we talk a lot about the store with our dry food feeders um the kibble the extruded kibble um let's add some gently cooked raw because that's an easy you know transitional step mm -hmm. to um getting more raw in the bowl or more minimally processed food in the bowl and really increasing the, the nutritional value of the food that the pet's eating. And so just, um, you know, I, I have some over here in, in my kitchen. It's, I think it's a six ingredient or a seven ingredient panel and it's turkey, turkey liver, you know, 
turkey heart, and then it's carrots, thyme, parsley, cilantro, which you know are some of those great leafy greens that are so full of um, phytonutrients. Um, there's another blog, uh, blog another um, podcast we could talk about, but um, back to the kibble. When we read that label, um, you are seeing, you'll see them talk about on TV or um, maybe even in magazine ads, if people still read magazines, um, it'll say chicken, but you really are looking for chicken heart, chicken liver, chicken, you know, gizzard, all the, the um, lung, the kidney. I mean, even adding that to the bowl is um, a boost to your pet's nutrition. Um, but in kibble, that's a little bit harder to find. And when you do find it, like we have some in our store, some brands that we love, um, for that reason. And we have raw pet food companies who actually make baked kibbles because they realize like we do that, you know, not everybody is there yet and they may never be. So um, we have baked raw coated kibble. We have kibble that has um, freeze dried nuggets in it. Like, like these, you know, this is a freeze dried raw. We sell a lot of this in the store and it's a great way to put, some raw food in the bowl when you're feeding dry. Um, so you, again, look for organ meat. It's not usually in kibble. It's in a few, but it is still going to be, you know, heat applied to the food, and which takes away some of that nutrition and kind of breaks it down. That's a whole other podcast. Um, but lastly, the when you're reading that label, one of the things that we teach, um, read each ingredient. And then when you get to the natural fat and this, it should be like chicken fat, mm -hmm. pork fat. Those are natural preservatives, unlike BHT, BHA, mm -hmm. which are known carcinogens. And they are in your grocery store, some of your grocery store pet foods, oh, yeah. your big box pet foods. When you're reading that label, and if you see BHA, BHT, that's a preservative, chemical preservative. Mm -hmm. You want natural um, chicken fat, like I said, is usually the most common um, when you're reading a dry food label. And then everything in front, so everything to the left of that chicken fat in this example is 80 to 85% of what is inside that bag. So I'll say that again. You read chicken chicken heart, hopefully chicken liver. You may see some, let's even just say potato. You know, there's protein in potato, mm -hmm. but it is a starchy carb. So, you know what, we know what starchy carbs turn into mm -hmm. sugar. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, that's, but anyhow, we've got read, reading the ingredients, you get to the fat, everything in front of the fat is 80 to 85% of the bag. So think about it. What do you want? in to be 80 to 85% of that bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good segue because you mentioned a couple of things that you'd never want to see in a pet food label. So let's, if, can we think of a few things, each of us that we never would never want to see on a pet food label? Like if we saw it, we would just be like, no, thank you. Like <laughs> I'm just putting this right back down. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. there's, there are a couple other toxic preservatives that I see a lot. One is purple gallate. One is um, ethoxic. Well, ethoxyquin is typically not even going to be labeled on there and because they don't have to. Um, it's typically in fish meals. It's like the preservative in the fish meal that the pet food companies use in their fish products. Not, not all of them. Not all of them. But I wanted to say that because, yeah, you, it, that's one of those things where you have to call up and ask the, you yeah. know, their process when yeah. they're catching. Where do they catch? How do they catch? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's also when, and this is typically in your lower quality foods, yeah. you know, your, your grocery store type brand foods. Um, but propyl gallate, I find a lot resonating mm -hmm. with pets. I've seen food dyes on labels. I'm still shocked that yes. I see BHA and BHT on labels. They, it's not approved for human food, yet they put it in pet food. Um, mm -hmm. Food dyes are linked to carcinogens. They're linked to certain cancers as well. 
Um, so anytime you see, and this is typical for some of the cheaper quality cat treats, you'll see red dye, yellow, number, yellow, red number 40, yellow, whatever, blue. It's, it's mm -hmm. like, really? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Reed does avoid anything with a food dye, anything mm -hmm. with a food dye. Um, yeah. You know, and it goes back to marketing. I think yeah. that, you know, they're marketing to us. Of course. We want to see the colors. The cat and the dog could care less what color their food is. Right. You know, yeah. Well, and it's like we we just asked somebody the other day, Pam, we were together and we were like, why is there caramel color in this? Yeah. And he legit just turned and said, so it looks better to you. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I yeah. get that. I get that. I knew that was going to be the answer, but it's like. If they don't keep getting this feedback, it's never going to change. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Kudos to him for being honest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And not trying to skirt the issue. But that, you know, it goes back to our topic today about, you know, marketing um, and things to look out for. I mean, the color is there because of us. Mm -hmm. They want to attract mm -hmm. us. Yeah. yeah. I'm so. so glad you brought up the dyes because that was definitely on my list. And, um, for me, not even getting into the things that we can't pronounce on the labels, <laughs> um, I personally think that for humans and animals alike, I don't think anybody on this planet, whether it is a cow in a pasture or your dog or on your plate, I don't think we should be eating corn um, because the corn we have yeah. today is not the corn yeah. we had 100 years ago. No. and there's just two. So if I see corn and, and, and then we have, you know, all of the wheats and, and, and dry, um, dry products that like, what are the, are yeah. there mycotoxins in there? And then the glyphosate with the corn, especially, I mean, but there are so many products in there that could have glyphosate and even with, you know, root vegetables, unless they're certified organic, I, I don't know that they're not full of glyphosate. So, um, but for me, my number one of things that I can pronounce on the label would be corn. <laughs> no, that's true. And, and one of the things that I picked up from one of my mentors, our mentor, um, is how corn is one of the top genetically modified um, crops, you know, just to keep up with the, feed industry. Yeah. You know, they mm -hmm. chose to, had to, I don't know. Um, in my idealism, I don't think that you have to do anything. Um, if it doesn't sit well with you, you know, you have good reason. So genetically modified corn, wheat, soy, soy is the, cool. the body yeah. does not know what to do with soy right. and humans don't need it little. And it's genetically modified. Um, let alone a pet, and, a, it's and a I hormone see disruptor. that and disruptor too. So, yeah, an endocrine disruptor is that what you said? Yes, it does. Yeah, and yeah, and we and Gunner agrees. Yeah. <laughs> I just heard was that Gunner or Aylin? <laughs> you know, we're talking about um marketing and I, I took some screenshots on some articles that I've read recently, knowing that we were going to be talking about this topic. And, um, one of my, um, fellow, you know, pet store owner colleagues was talking about, um, prescription diets. You talk about a marketing term there, <laughs> there, there is no such thing. No, there's no medication. Legally. What? There's no medication in it whatsoever. No. no, there's no. no prescription diet. It's it's okay. just a ploy. And what here's she says, prescription diets are just a marketing ploy. There's yeah. nothing medicinal about them. Mm -mm. If a client, her client wants to know what is in commercial pet food today, we tell them to watch the documentary Pet Fooled. Yes. Right. And we. We also tell them to sign up for the truth about pet food dot com. Yes. Um, so the other thing that I love that she brought up and we experience this in our store frequently is um, 
first of all, when they ask for prescription food, we always ask the reason why, and we try to talk them to them about a minimally processed whole food diet, which is very difficult. I mean, the, the, that's a big hurdle to overcome in one conversation. So again, we have to remember to plant the seed, um, and, and whatnot. But when she goes on to talk about it is that, you know, if you actually read the label, going back to what we're talking about today, Mm -hmm. it will say on there that it's not for long term. Yet we see dogs and cats that have been on these quote unquote prescriptive or prescription diets for months and years, Mm -hmm. years. The most recent um, visitor to our store stopped in because her uh, little Shih Tzu needs to lose at least five pounds. And um, she's a senior. She has been eating a prescription diet. And, you know, my my sarcasm <laughs> comes out and I'm like, imagine that a prescription diet filled with corn and wheat and gluten and soy mm-hmm. made the dog overweight. And then we have hip issues. We have skin issues mm-hmm. on top of it. And guess what else? That gas harder. Yes, teeth. Mm-hmm. So we have to go in for this hundreds of dollars. It's expensive dental. So, you know, the teeth are the easiest thing. It's like we talk about um, the fact that all the carbohydrates in a dry food diet and extruded kibble that's what puts tartar on the teeth. If we have a a cleaner diet, we don't have tartar. And if you switch your dog to a cleaner diet, eventually most of the tartar actually goes away on its own. But there's, we always tell them to, you know, I'm uncovering the label since you don't mind. (laughs) You know, we talk about coconut oil is a natural toothpaste and just rub it on the tooth and gum, the gum line and give them um, a meaty bone, a marrow bone, um, a, you know, a natural bully stick to chew on cow ear, something like that for the scraping motion. But, you know, coconut oil has a natural enzyme that has many other health benefits. Um, and it's not a fake toothpaste. It's, you know, hopefully you can prevent, you know, your pet from going under anesthesia for, um, a dental that may not, it may be corrected easier than we think. But in this particular dog, I hope that's the case. And um, we talked about transitioning slowly to a um, minimally processed diet. And in in this case, um, we did give them a sample of freeze dried raw to put in with the kibble to start mixing that. Um, And we talked about the fact that really prescription diets are not long-term it's to get through an episode um, and then to get them back on a biologically appropriate diet because health is going to stem from what they eat. You remember the old, the saying, you are what you eat. You know, if you eat a diet high in carbohydrates and sugar, you're going to feel it. You're going to see the results of it. And um, if you eat a healthier diet, I mean, you know, I'm, going through this journey on my own. My dogs have taught me so much and in caring for my dogs, I'm able to now better care for myself because it's things doctors never tell you, you know, they say, Hey, you've got this, but they don't tell you why. And you go out and you find out on your own. But fortunately, you know, with my dogs, it's, it's been able to help me. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with our pet parents. The, the same thing is to, you kind of transition them over because when we eat a healthier diet, we have a healthier pet. Yeah. So don't fall to the labels. Amen. We're smart. Just something about the pet label specifically on the guaranteed analysis as I've done this before. It will say, let's say you're feeding a bag or something in there and there's, legumes and there's peas and there's potato or whatever and those have a small percentage of protein Mm -hmm. they are more likely to be a source of starch or sugar when it's metabolized but the labels don't distinguish between the difference of animal protein and plant protein correct i have actually called a manufacturer one time because and this was a very this is a very well-known 
highly respected brand for their sourcing and quality and this and that. And you know what they told me? They don't what? know. What? They don't know. they don't know. They couldn't give me the answer. I said, how much of your product is animal protein versus plant protein? You had to have gotten the new person that day. <laughs> Two couldn't tell me. Couldn't wow. Tell me. Or couldn't tell me. I don't know what the answer was. But yeah. You don't know the difference. Yeah. Clarity on a simple thing, because again, it's not broken down on their labels. And yeah. My cats need to eat animal protein, not plant protein. Yes. Right. Thank you. It does affect. Yep. You know, that that guaranteed analysis. But yeah. Well, and when you have plant protein versus animal protein, first of all, our dogs, our dogs are carnivores and our cats are obligate carnivores. And there are essential nutrients and animal protein that you're just not going to get from plant protein, like mm -hmm. taurine. Exactly. I mean, this is an essential nutrient that your, uh, your cat is going to die without, right? Like they have to have taurine and other things, but I mean, yeah. you, yeah, you can't just say, Oh, I don't know to me in my mind. I'm like, no, you have to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was very disappointing. Considering the brand. I call yeah. That was very, yeah. It's like, oh, that is, you know, we, we really should um, invite some one to come on the show and break that down for us. I'm sure we have listeners that would be interested, um, not just us nerding out about this kind of thing, but, okay. but you're right, Pam, you know, they do not break down. If it says, you know, 38% protein, and then you see that there's the, the turkey neck and the, you know, chicken gizzard or whatever, you know, the animal protein, it's obvious, um, but it's not obvious to most people, no. um, most pet parents, mm -hmm. the, that, there can be plant protein. Like I was mentioning earlier, there's protein in potato. potato. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a brand that I love and that's in my store, they um, are a extremely simple ingredient panel. Um, they are a human food um, company that in the, I call it an art <laughs> and science of feeding their working dogs they saw the result of what they were feeding. Um, in this case, they are fisher, a fishery or fishermen, you know, that were, and so they found the correlation between what they were feeding um, the fish and the dogs was of so much interest to them and how well they were doing that they created a pet food line. And this is many decades ago. And so they went through the feeding trials and whatnot, but you know, they're, their label is, I mean, it's very simple ingredient. In some cases, it's two ingredients, meat and potato. And it, it you know, I, I oftentimes I look at that and, you know, it's very high protein because potato is protein. Mm -hmm. And I will say that that diet is not for every dog. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a, um, a metabolic dog that yeah. tends to put on weight easily, that wouldn't be the one. But, you know, we have dogs that sometimes, you know, it, the pet parent is feeding a dry food that that is going to be how it, it goes. And we've worked through the limited ingredient foods that are in the store. And this one works where others don't. It's just it's interesting to see the responses that individual pets have, you know, on all the different foods. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we look at labels every day, constantly. Yeah. Yes. Well, so really a message that people need to look at their labels every day. Yeah, we really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you've been feeding the same thing for a long time, you still want to check the label because it could have changed and they're not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, and Jessica, that is, I just went through this myself. I have a metabolic dog. And he's right here at my feet, my heart dog, Hank. Um, he's a 10 and a half year old Australian shepherd, guys. And he recently, um, we're going through some medical challenges with him. And I took him for an oxygen chamber therapy treatment. And the practitioner made a comment about his weight. And I said, well, you know, he was just in the vet. And the vet didn't say a word about his weight. Um, 
and he's right at 74 pounds. And y'all, some of you are going, Oh my God, that's a huge Aussie. Hank and Charlie are, have, Oh my gosh, they were huge puppies, but the mama was a, was huge. Um, biggest Aussies I've ever seen. <laughs> and so they've been 75 pounds their entire adult lives. Um, until we started having issues and, um, Anyhow, I was answering the practitioner as to what he eats because he's on a gently cooked raw diet mm -hmm. and I have to monitor, you know, all of their calorie intake, but his especially because he puts weight on very um, easily because of his situation. And so I answered her and, but it, it left this impression upon me. So when I got home, I went to the, um, packaging just to double check my math. And I was floored. Um, I had an old brochure mm -hmm. that I was going by. Mm -hmm. And then I looked, I actually went to my store and was talking with my girls there and told them the situation. And we looked at all four of the proteins and the chicken was 666 calories per one pound patty. Whereas the turkey um, it said in the book was 500 calories. So I was feeding the same amount, trading proteins, not realizing that when I was going from turkey to chicken, I was giving an extra, what is that? How many? 160? 160. Yeah. Twice, two times two. I was giving him that many more calories a day when I switched the proteins because we always switch proteins. There's different amino acid profiles. So um, different nutrient profiles. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring that up because, you know, we're not perfect. I live this world every day and I so easily just fell right into that because I didn't double check the ingredient label. And I'm not real sure, um, you know, they added bone broth to this particular recipe. So, you know, I've got some more digging to do because I'm really interested in why, you know, this jump, you know, but mm -hmm. chicken has got more um, protein and fat than turkey. I know that. I just never dreamt that it was 166 more calories per meal. So if you're That's switching. That's significant for a dog. Yeah. It's like, very really significant. significant for a dog. Yeah. Yes. And I looked at a picture of him from having just two, I'm trying, what is this, August, um, two and a half months ago. And I sent the picture to his practitioner and I said, you know, this was the last time he went to, or the time before he went to the vet. And, and um, you could see just how he had a great cut. You know, he had the Nike swoosh, as I call it, and where his hips were smaller. And I look at him now and I'm like, wow. You really can tell. And I'm so grateful she said something to me about it because mm -hmm. I'd still be feeding them. Oh, yeah, you get a whole patty. Mm, not of this particular protein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So listen and, okay. and learn. <laughs> I know. Right. And and you do yeah. have to learn. And, and so really, really quickly before um, we let you go, uh, I told you I was going to go over the food that my mom asked me to check yeah. out this morning. So I had never heard of this company, this brand before she texted me this morning. The website, just in case you wanna follow along and see what I'm seeing, is The Neighborhood Harvest. And the food is called The Harvest Dog. So I clicked on, it says dog food, beef, green bean, and carrot. And it is a um, complete and balanced, oh, reader view um dog food it says first the first thing it says is click the photo to view the label which includes feeding guidelines and nutritional analysis i said oh you're gonna give me a nutritional analysis so i clicked on it and the first thing i do is go to that label and there is no nutritional analysis there's a guaranteed analysis <laughs> and those are two different things and um so I'm looking at, you know, it's, it's a cooked, uh, cooked food. So it's really, really high in moisture. Um, I'm looking and I'm like, it's only seven, still only 7% protein, 4% fat. So I'm like, eh, okay. Um, but it says it's a complete and balanced diet for dogs. 
and um, it is formulated to meet AFCO standards. So I'm like, okay, um, it is at least complete and balanced, right? And it is fresh food. So I'm looking at this going, okay, it's better than the kibble you're feeding. That's my first thing I'm thinking. Yeah. So then I look at the ingredients, ground beef, brown rice, sweet potato, carrots, green beans, egg, canola oil, which I hate, yeah. potassium mm -hmm. citrate, dicalcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, garbanzo beans, choline, um, bit, I can't say everything, bitterate, trade, <laughs> bitter trade, <laughs> taurine, salt, um, zinc. There's a bunch of vitamins and minerals, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So this is what I sent to her. I said, better than kibble for sure, but it wouldn't be on my recommended list. And here's why. First of all, their marketing is a lie. They say there's a nutrient analysis available and there isn't. It's a guaranteed analysis. So that made me mad. Mm -hmm. um, they're not the same thing. It looks like they're adding a premix. Um, by all of the vitamins and minerals listed on the ingredient panel, panel. And I bet they didn't do a nutritional analysis because they're adding taurine and taurine is really high on the list of ingredients. And I know that you're, you're going to, a dog especially, you're going to produce taurine from the meat. So if they had done the nutritional analysis, they would know how much taurine is coming from the meat and they might not need it at all. And if they do, it should be lower on the list. Um, Canola oil and rice, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily feed. And I couldn't find anything on the website about sourcing, but still better than kibble. And then I gave her some um, foods, cooked foods that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. So just so you can follow along and see how somebody like me is interpreting a pet food label. That I can't, it's blurry, but I think that's the right. It Yeah, I was following along with you. So what do it's you? It's the neighborhood did, harvest. Did did I miss anything? No, mm -hmm. I think you know. So when the whole DCM dilated cardiomyopathy scare, the fear mongering came out, some companies chose to put taurine in the ingredients to help pet parents feel more comfortable, mm -hmm. even though they don't need it, because as you mentioned. Taurine's a natural derivative of like muscle and organ meat. Dogs can produce it. Cats cannot. Right. That's, and this is a dog food. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do a whole episode on cats. <laughs> um, and I'll listen. <laughs> I'll listen. <laughs> I'll listen. <laughs> I've told you before, we're dog centric, but we do love our kitties. We just, it's just not our, you know, thing. But um, there is a, a long list. I know it's blurry, but this to there is all the, like you mentioned, the vitamin premix. And which is interesting to me because when, and I think that you were not wrong in what you told your mom, you, I, I think you did a good job there. And you're telling her if you're going to feed a, a gently cooked or a minimally processed food, um, the nutrients should come from the food. Because I don't know how much this costs, but like in, in our store and, and in the labels I've read to you today, it's all whole foods. And the, the complete and balanced nutrient profile comes from whole foods. We don't have to add all the folic acid, the calcium, the vitamin A, the you know riboflavin, niacin, selenium, all that. It's in the food. So this is a fresh food. It's um, not organic. It, you know, it said, doesn't say anything about that. Um, so we talked about earlier about, you know, root vegetables. They, they draw in everything that is sprayed on the, on the land, on the earth, the dirt. Yeah. Um, ground beef, where's it from? Right. Feedlot. Yeah, yeah I didn't Hormones, see any, antibiotics. Any any issue in yep. Are they fed corn? You know, because you are what you eat. Your pets are what, you know, is it the ingredients. So there's a lot of things added here. And I think that you were right in what you told her. I mean, I think it's great that she wants to feed a diet that's minimally processed, but you can guide her to something even better. Yay. <laughs> you did a Yay. good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like there are companies out there that are using whole foods to, and they're balancing with whole foods and um, there you need to add. So, 
this is different for cats than it is for dogs, but you can totally get a hundred percent whole foods and balance with a dog. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get closer, you can get close with a cat food, but you're going to have to add, add in some stuff with a cat food, um, some supplements, but with a dog food, if you can do it, that's, that's my thing. It's like, okay, that's totally fine. If you want to feed it, feed it. It's better than kibble. But, um, there are these other companies out here doing the exact same thing, but they're doing it better. So yeah. why don't we support them? Yeah. Yeah. Have her go look at Waruva. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are, yeah, I sent her a list. Well, I only, I, I didn't include Waruva, but I sent her a list this morning. But let me tell you, no, I have been trying, I've been working on my mom's dogs for like six years. This is not a new oh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> but- Family is fun. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, I think we can talk about this for hours and hours and hours, but we need to cut it, I think today and just make sure you are following the podcast on whatever app you are using. um, Please. We'll be continuing this discussion. There is so much to talk about and to find out anything more about myself or Pam or Janet, go to pethealthjunkies.com. If you don't like listening on a podcast app, you can listen there and then you can find out more about us. You can click on our bios and follow us individually on social media. We would love for you to do that. Do y'all have any parting words? I just want to say that I hope that we are keeping it simple enough. You know, we're not the, the, the doctors and the, you know, the sci- science or science, <laughs> as our friends say over <laughs> at Dr. Morgan's. Um, but we want to present the information in a way that it's not, it's less intimidating mm-hmm. and just kind of let our thoughts go where they go. And um, like in a conversation. So again, and if there's questions or comments, leave them you know, for us and we'll get back to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. Pam. And like you always say, Jessica, when you know better, you, we do better. Yes. I like that. I would just say, don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Just learn and yep. then start, start practicing reading the labels and then, you know, start transitioning to something better when you're putting labels side by side and decide, yeah. okay, what, what feels better that I could start trying, you know, switch to. Um, because it, it can be overwhelming. We don't want you to feel overwhelmed. We just want you to yeah. learn so yeah. that you can start making better choices. So. Yeah. Go buy Very something well like said. these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And just start using them as treats or taking out, uh, you know, two tablespoons of kibble and put in yep. some raw nuggets, some freeze dried nuggets. Just it's shelf stable. Keep it yeah. on, in the pantry. It, Keep it closed so the oxygen doesn't get in and oxidate all the good ingredients. Mm-hmm. But start somewhere. You can feed it as a treat. Exactly. Yes, it's a whole our, healthy treat. For our listeners, she was holding up some primal freeze-dried and some Stella and Chewy's freeze-dried. <laughs> Thank you. I forget um, about that. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Um, as Janet said, when you know better, you can do better. Make sure to go to pet help pethealthjunkies.com and follow all of us on the socials until next time. Bye guys. Bye guys.